Hello and welcome to Tech Talks. My name is Lisa and I'm the Digital Services Librarian at St. Albert Public Library. And today I would like to show you a digital newspaper e-resource called Canadian Newsstream. So the way you get to Canadian Newsstream is to go to our website, sapl.ca, and you're going to tap on e-library. And that's going to bring up a number of different e-resources. Now you can scroll down and look for it there. Or in this case, because we know we want newspapers, we're going to tap on newspapers. There we go. So that brings up our three newspaper databases. We, today we're looking at Canadian News Stream. Press Reader is also a great one. We'll talk a little bit about that today, but we're going to be focusing on Canadian News Stream. So we're just going to tap on more. And this just shows you what Canadian News Stream is, how to access it, and their privacy policy in terms of reference. So we're just going to tap on access it now there we go and i actually already have it open so i'm just going to close it here so when you open this at home it's going to ask you to put your library card number and your pin number in before it will open your library card number is the number that starts with five twos so this is canadian news stream and what canadian news stream is it has newspapers all across from all across canada and they're full text and there's back issues as well so press reader which is our other newspaper database is a great one it has current issues and it's from all over the world, not just Canada, but it doesn't have back issues. So Canadian News Stream is great if you're doing any sort of research, especially genealogy, you can access newspapers from all over Canada, including the back issues. So let's take a look and see how this works. So just a basic tour of it. This is the basic search. So if you knew the title of the newspaper you're looking for, you could put it in there. There's an advanced search. So let's say you wanted to combine search terms. Let's say we want to put Edmonton Journal. There we go. And then we're going to tell it that is the publication name, publication title, there we go. And then if there was a certain topic you were looking for, you could type it in here and then you could select subject heading or if you there was an author of an article that you'd read, you can put the author in there too. So that's an advanced search. Publications is probably one that you will use quite a bit. So this is basically a shortcut, a way to get to the publications that you want. And generally it's alphabetical by title. So in this case, we're gonna look at the Edmonton Journal. So it's going to be under E. And we'll wait for that to load. So we could scroll down and, and we will eventually find it here. And there it is, Edmonton Journal. And you can see all the information it has from 1989 to present, and it's always going to be a day delayed. So the current day's newspaper won't be on here. It'll always be the day before. So that's one way you can get to it is through the publications, or we can just type it in here because we know we want the Edmonton Journal. We're just gonna bring that up there. And I'm recording on an iPad, so this is going to look different if you were on a computer or on a mobile device. So now we have the Edmonton Journal. So you can see there are two different entries. One of them is from 2017 to present, and it's an online version. And one is from 1989 to present. So we'll look at both of them to see what the difference is. So we're gonna tap on the first one, which is from 1989 to present. So this shows you all the back issues. And this is really handy when you're doing genealogy or any sort of research. So we're just tapping on 2020. And let's see if we can see yesterday's newspaper. There it is right there. July the 9th. So unlike Press Reader, where you can see images, Canadian News Stream is full text. So you're not going to see the pictures, but you will see the full article and what page it was actually on in the physical newspaper. So let's just tap on one of these. I'm gonna do show more. So it does give you some subject headings as well. So we're gonna tap on that article. And here it is right here. So here is the full text, so you can read this article I'll just scroll back up here. Now the nice thing about Canadian News Stream, you have the option up here on the upper right, you see these little round uh, turquoise dots. One says save as PDF site. So if you were doing, uh, doing this research for a paper, it would show you how to do a citation style. You can email it to yourself, you can print it. And then there's a few other options. We'll just tap on all options so you can see all the different options. So great great ways of being able to, to access and save this article. So we're just gonna tap on save on P, save as PDF. 
Again, I'm on an iPad. This won't look quite the same if you're on a computer. So right now it's just downloading and there we go. So you can see it looks quite a bit different than it did when we were reading it right in the database. So that is how you do it. Very, very easy to use. So we're just going to tap and close that. So that was the Edmonton Journal, the first one. We're just going to go back a few ways. The one from 1989 that you can see here at the bottom to 2020 to current. But let's take a look at this one here, the second entry, where it says Edmonton Journal Online from 2017 to present. This one, I think one of them, yeah, one of them's classed as a blog or a podcast or a website, and that would be the Edmonton Journal Online, and the other one is classed as a newspaper. So that's how you can search. You can search by the publication title, rate in publications, or we can just do a basic search. So let's do a basic search. Let's say we want something from St. Albert. So let's try the St. City News. St. City News, there we are. And there it is right there. So you can see there's a number of entries and over here on the left, this is very useful. This is called uh, filters that you can sort by relevance or the oldest first or the most recent. You can choose which format. So there's more than just newspapers. There are magazines in here and reports in a number of other formats. You can change the publication date. So let's say you don't want to see everything all the years, you can enter a different date range. So we're going to do that just so we can see. We're going to do just this last week to there and then we'll update it. There we are. So you can still see though, we have a lot of results. 20, well not as bad as what we did have. If we wanted to, we could filter it down by publication title. So even though I put in the Saint City News, it is grabbing on to the word Saint and City. So it's going to pull up things that aren't necessarily related. So let's just see what it has pulled up for us. So in this case, we are not seeing anything from the Saint City News. So we're just going to update the dates that we put in, we're going to get rid of those. Because I think that's why we're not seeing it. There we go. And update. Okay, so now that we took off the date range and we just left it as everything, now we're seeing St. City News from St. Albert's. So let's tap on full text. This is a very short article. That actually is the full article, but it's very tiny. Let's see if we can find one that's going to be a little bit longer. There we go. So there's an article that's quite a bit longer. And they do have, even though you can't see it, they do have the color photographs and they, the information about the illustrations that you would have actually seen in the paper if you had the physical paper. Now the other nice thing is if you don't want to read in English, it will translate it for you. So let's say you are reading in English right now, but you want to switch to French. We just tap on that and it's going to translate that article for us. And here we are. So now we have this same article, only it's in French. So it's just a nice handy feature. We're just going to undo that translation. And you can also use highlighting. So you can, right now it's highlighting Saint City News because that was our search term. So that's a nice feature as well. So we're just going to go back home here. Now the one thing about Canadian News Stream, it's one of our newspaper databases. But this particular vendor called ProQuest has other databases. So here where it says change databases, there are three of them. One's Canadian News Stream, one's Coronavirus, and one is the Calgary Herald Archive, also really good if you're doing genealogy. So instead of having to log in and out between the three of them, you can just switch. So if I tap on ProQuest Historical Newspapers, Calgary Herald Archive, there we are. So now we're in it. So instead of having to go to our website and log in into it separately, you can swap. So that's a nice handy feature. That's actually a fairly new feature that Canadian News Stream added. And so that's basically how you do it. Very, really easy to use. Great if you are looking for newspapers from different places across Canada. Actually, let's just have a quick look at that. So let's say you are not actually originally from Alberta. Maybe you are from Ontario and you want to read your hometown newspaper. So let's do an example here. We're going to look at Kingston, Ontario. So I'm just doing a keyword. Let's pretend that I don't know the name of the newspaper in Kingston. We're just going to search Kingston. And then if we go over here to our filters, we're going to do publication title and the Whig standard 
the Kingston wig, that is the Kingston's ma major newspaper. And there we are. So now we can read the Kingston wig right from Canadian Newsstream. So it's really nice if you want to read the paper from where you're originally from, or if you're doing genealogy research or research for papers for if you're a student and you're doing research, this is also a great resource. And this is all free with your library card. So I would encourage you to have a look through Canadian Newsstream. Thank you.